Welcome to Holy Cross. Happy New Year. We now begin the new church year. We're glad you are with us and joining us in this new year. We're working on a theme during this season of Advent leading up to Christmas about here with us. And this week, here with us to give us hope. In this season, we certainly look forward to the birth of Jesus. And scripture said, the word would become flesh and dwell among us. But it also says at his crucifixion and his resurrection that, that he left us physically. So we celebrate that he is still here with us, here with us in our heart, here with us in that spiritual way that renews our hope and our trust that he will return again. In our gospel reading for today, Jesus talks about the sign of the fig tree. Now, I don't think this is a fig tree. I'm not a botanist, but I'm not quite sure, but it, it, it's something close. And he gave us a sign that when we know when leaves appear and when the cycles of trees move forward, we know that things are happening, seasons are coming. And he says the same thing will be true as we see things going on in our world around us. His mercies will come new to us every day. We can celebrate his goodness to us all the time. And in that, we can keep our hope alive in spite of all the things that are going on around us that might make us feel hopeless, as some might feel in the midst of all this virus that's happening. So as we celebrate, we encourage you to be with us. Jesus is here with us all the time at Holy Cross and will be until he comes again. And in that, we can continue to hope as well. So join us in these coming weeks as we look at other aspects of him being here with us. You're welcome to join us here live and in person at 8.15 or at 10.30 for our uh, services that are online. And again, if you're not quite ready to step in in, purpose, in person, but would like communion, let us know. Call the church office. We'd be glad to set up a time for you to do that. God be with you in this season. And again, Happy New Year. Lord, you left your throne and your kingly crown when you came to the earth for me. But in Bethlehem's home there was found begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, it is our hope that you would tear open the heavens and come and be present with us. You are our God of hope, and we confidently expect that you will come among us. Meet us in our darkened, broken places, and bring your light and healing to our troubled world. You are our God of hope, and we are waiting with great expectation, watching for your presence among us. God of Advent, Christmas, and Easter, 
we are watching for you to come among us. Hear our prayers of confession. We are confident you will forgive our sin. We confess the broken nature of our world and our own humanity. Sin has shattered your intentions and purposes for your creation. Forgive us. We are those who have lived in darkness, but we have seen a great light. Sin is forgiven in the light of the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the stead and by the command of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first reading for this week, the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 64. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains would tremble before you. As when fire sets twigs ablaze and causes water to boil, come down to make your name known to your enemies and cause the nations to quake before you. For when you did awesome things that we did not expect, you came down and the mountains trembled before you. Since ancient times, no one has heard no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you, who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. You come to the help of those who gladly do right, who remember your ways. But when we continue to sin against them, you were angry. How then can we be saved? All of us have become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. We all shrivel up like a leaf, and like the wind, our sins sweep us away. No one calls on your name or strives to lay hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and made us waste away because of our sins. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be angry beyond measure, O Lord, do not remember our sins forever. Oh, look upon us, we pray, for we are all your people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading, Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, the first chapter. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I always thank God for you because of his grace given you in Christ Jesus. For in him you have been enriched in every way, in all your speaking and in all your knowledge, because our testimony about Christ was confirmed in you. Therefore, you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. He will keep you strong to the end so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God, who has called you into fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, is faithful. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading for this day, the gospel according to St. Mark, the 13th chapter. Jesus said, But in those days, following that distress, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky, and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, people will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And he will send his angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heavens. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that it is near right at the door. Truly I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. 
Be on guard. Be alert. You do not know when that time will come. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each with their assigned task, and tells the one at the door to keep watch. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening, or at midnight, or when the rooster crows, or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We confess together our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Grace to you and mercy and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. It's been quite some time now, but I remember when we were together with some of our friends, we were all perhaps in our late 40s, if I remember correctly, and we were talking with one another about our lives and where we'd been. And I remember one group, one of the people in the group shared that her life was just different from what she'd intended it to be. We could hear the sort of sadness and a little regret for opportunities she felt she'd missed and adventures she may not have taken. And when someone shares that kind of thing in our group, we, we, we all get turned into cheerleaders and, and life coaches and psychologists and trying to encourage one another. So we began to encourage and challenge her to continue to engage in some of those dreams. It wasn't too late. And after a while, it became clear that all of us really had a lot of the same issues. We all had adventures we'd not taken, magic beans we'd never scattered and planted. Many of us, it seemed like we're just waiting for something to happen. And as we looked back, we realized that in that waiting, life kept going on and, and, and not much changed. Well, for some, that realization can be quite disturbing and very depressing. A feeling of hopelessness can come upon you. Well, finally, in that meeting, one of us said, well, what are we doing? And that caused a little bit of a levity, a little bit of a, a laughter, and seemed to lighten the mood a bit, but the question was not about what we were doing at the moment. It was a much bigger question, a much deeper question and a wider question. What are we doing? What are we living for? Are we really living or are we just breathing and marking time? Are we really as hopeless as we feel or think we are? Well, as Christians, a lot of those same questions could be asked of us here today. Are we really living or are we just breathing and marking time? We mentioned a few weeks ago that there's a difference between merely existing and really living. And for many of us, we could even ask, are we as hopeless as we think we are? Well, in Mark's gospel for this week, Jesus not only takes on those questions, but breaks them down a little bit, defines for us the relationship between waiting and hoping. Jesus said, but in those days, following that distress, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, the stars will fall down from the sky, the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, people will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And he'll send his angels to gather the elect from all the four winds and the ends of the earth. He says, learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender, its leaves come out, you know summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you'll know that it is near. In fact, he says, right at the door. But he also says about that day and about that hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, not only the Father. So as we move into the text, we've got to recognize that 
This is one that seems to leave you with more questions than it does answers. I think we find ourselves struggling with this text because we get stuck often on the wrong questions. As we read this text, it's easy for us to get stuck on the questions of how and when. Even Jesus' disciples debated that several times. When is all this going to happen? And so for centuries, we've had prediction after prediction after prediction about this second coming and when these events will take place and how they're going to take place. But they will all continue to be wrong. Why? Jesus tells us. About that day or hour, no one knows. Not even angels in heaven or the Son, only the Father. Jesus tells us that he's not going to answer the question of when and how. He is clear that the question of when is really not the point. It's really not the issue here at all. So here's what we do know. Jesus will come again. And no one will know the time or the place or how it's going to happen. No matter how hard we try to predict, no matter how many current events we want to try and link together with Scripture or try and say this is a sign of that, we won't know. But there is a sort of rub that leads us to some confusion. Jesus says you won't know when and you won't know how, but then he says, stay alert and keep watch. Well, isn't Jesus really then saying here that when really does matter? Well, again, that's the genius of Jesus' teaching. He predicts where we'll get stuck. And he teaches us right out of it, and then teaches us right into the questions that really matter. The questions of why and what. So let's unpack those a little bit. The why and the what. First, there's a why. We spent several weeks in our last couple sermon series talking about the desire of God for restoration to put things back together again, to put the wholeness of his creation back where it had been broken. And as Christians, we believe that the universe was not intended to be broken and that at some time there be an ultimate restoration of all that is broken. That's the what. We said that's going to happen again in that time in the future. While the why is also out of our control. The answer to why outlines for us the intent of God for all of his creation. He wants it all to be restored to its wholeness, which brings us to the answer to what do we do? Well, Jesus gives us answers that matter. He says, we, be on guard, be alert. You don't know when that time will come. He says it's like a man going away. He leaves his house, he puts his servants in charge, each with his assigned task, and tells the one at the door to keep watch. Therefore, keep watch, he says, because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether evening or at midnight or when the rooster crows or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, don't let him find you sleeping, Jesus says. So what I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. Well, there seem to be at least three different characters in this text. The first is the homeowner. He leaves on his journey. Now, we typically understand the homeowner to be Jesus, especially when we compare this text with some others in Scripture, like Matthew 25. There's a story there of a bridegroom and the ten virgins or bridesmaids who are waiting. The second character is actually a, a whole group of characters. It's all these workers of the household whose charge is to keep the household functioning, running it just as efficiently as if the homeowner is there. And the third character seems to be the doorkeeper who's to keep watch, watching for the return of the homeowner. And again, we see the effects of that doorkeeper in that Matthew 25 text. When he says, but at midnight there was a shout, look, here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. And we find out that five of those bridesmaids or versions were prepared and five were not. Well, the Matthew comparison sort of solidifies that there are three characters in the text, but the problem with the th three characters is that we get the last two sort of mixed up. The workers of the household and the doorkeeper. And we get them all mixed up and separate them into two entities instead of two different roles. You see, so here's how we're going to break it down. Jesus is the homeowner. 
We are the workers. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, who's really the third player in this story, we are also doorkeepers. This means we are to be simultaneously working as partners with God in the restoration of the coming kingdom, but also to be on watch for that coming kingdom. So the Holy Spirit is the third player that keeps us doing all that. It's in that dual role for us as the priesthood of all believers working for the kingdom of God and living in the Spirit as enlightener and sustainer that we find our true hope that keeps us moving until the Jesus comes again. And it is this hope that answers the question, are we really as hopeless as we feel or we think we are? Because it's in this dual role that we understand hope is something deeper than just an excitement or a hope as just looking forward to something. I hope we get out of here in time. This hope that comes as worker and watcher moves us into a way of life that brings life. This hope breaks through to move us from just breathing and existing to really living. This hope also motivates us to want to share it with others who seem to have no hope. And it's out of this hope that, that ministries, ministries like Urban Ark and things like that come into being. It's out of this hope that we're inspired to use the, the I-go methods and the blessed efforts to reach our neighbors. This hope reflects the love and grace of God that strengthens us and empowers us as we await the Lord's coming. So I hope we'd be able to share that hope with renewed boldness and confidence each and every day for Jesus' sake. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. That we may not be distracted or grow complacent, but be ready and waiting for the Lord when he returns in his glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
that the Lord would guide and watch over his church and all who serve her, pastors, missionaries, and all church workers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That the Lord would bless our every effort to share the good news of Jesus, that all the elect may hear and heed his voice, calling and gathering his people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That the Lord would bless our nation and leaders, and that they may guide us with wisdom in paths of peace and justice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That the sick and the suffering may find healing and relief, and that the dying and the grieving may know his comfort and peace. We remember all those on our prayer lists, our families and friends, and those near and dear to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer, that we may be wise and faithful in our use of all the resources God has entrusted to us, and that we may use them for his glory and in support of the work of his kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer that God may give us all things we need and all that will benefit us, and that he may keep from us all things that might prove harmful to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who also teaches us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord continue to look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs>